The Coca-Cola Company is one of the biggest companies in the world, a cultural icon known on every continent as a symbol for America. They are known for many things, like advertising, its refreshing taste, and even more. Coke grew during the 20th century, slowly making its mark across the continents. Its success could not be replicated by any other company in the world. But how did this American symbol achieve its famous status among the globe? During World War II, Coca-Cola established bottling plants where American troops were concentrated. When the war ended, it was positioned to provide Coke to the world. In the first decades after the war, Coca-Cola successfully took on a diplomatic role, becoming a symbol of American goodwill to the world. Coca-Cola Company was not always this big. The drink was created back in 1886 by a man called John S. Pemberton. Pemberton was from Georgia. He was a pharmacist who made lots of patent medicine. In 1884, Pemberton remade a drink from France using the coca leaves and alcohol. He created a new drink in 1886 because of prohibition, forcing him to alter it while removing alcohol. There were two new ingredients. Now he used the coca leaves and the cola nut, but this time with no alcohol. He decided to name the drink Coca-Cola because of the two main ingredients he used to create it. The Coca-Cola company was originally founded when Asa Candor purchased rights to Coca-Cola in the late 19th century. Coca-Cola was not always bottled as it is now. The drink used to be sold only as a fountain drink. A couple of lawyers came to Asa Canwar and told him how much it would help to start selling the drink in bottles. He did not think it would work and did not approve of the idea. Though, he decided to permit it to the two lawyers. He said to them that he would allow them to bottle Coca-Cola as long as they left his room. At first, Coca-Cola in America did not have very good relations. The Food and Drugs Act had been passed around the start of the 20th century. Because Coca-Cola was showing kids drinking their caffeinated drink, the government took them to court. Though, tensions lowered throughout the years. The U.S. Army had begun embracing the drink near the end of the First World War and started asking for it to be delivered to their army camps. Because of events like this occurring, the company started gaining popularity in the United States. The sudden rise of this company was unexpected. World War II began, and the world was in chaos. General Eisenhower was trying to think of a way to boost the morale of his troops. His idea was a drink that would inspire his soldiers. He decided to first make a poll. What is their favorite drink? The majority voted for Coca-Cola. He decided to send a telegram to the Coca-Cola company to have Coke brought to the soldiers. The only issue with this plan was that during this time, sugar was extremely expensive and difficult to get. This was mostly due to the war. Coca-Cola would have troubles getting it to the soldiers if they couldn't even afford it. Nevertheless, the Coca-Cola company responded quickly and said that they would help. The first time they tried, the Coca-Cola company started shipping fully packaged Coca-Cola bottles to the battlefield. This did not work out because of a political conflict in which NBC News argued that the planes used to transport Coca-Cola lost space for important weapons. The company's solution was to transport bottling plants, and when there was a time or place when they could not transport bottling plants, they could transport portable fountains. Sixty-four bottling plants were then built in the battlefield in almost every single continent on Earth. Robert Woodruff enacted his plan to get a Coca-Cola into the hands of every soldier, fighting the war. The first Coca-Cola bottling plant to be built in the battlefields was built in Algiers. To get Coca-Cola to every soldier in the army, Coke executives got official army roles of technical observers. They took their jobs very seriously. Their jobs were just as important as fixing vehicles, fixing weapons, delivering weapons, 
and many more important jobs in the army. They had to deliver cokes to the soldiers while they were fighting so that they would be reminded of what they were fighting for. They replaced everyone on the battlefield that was possible. They were honored like real army soldiers. Some suspect that they were treated differently from the soldiers though. They actually were not. The soldiers, in fact, welcomed the technical observers. They were thankful that the Coca-Cola company was good enough to send executives to give them a taste of home. To help with getting Coca-Cola around the battlefields, the army actually forced war prisoners, both German and Japanese, to work in the bottling plants. Even though Coke was just a drink, it was counted as an essential war commodity. The American army and the Coca-Cola company went as so far as to try to get their product all the way to the Pacific Islands. This plan worked great. General Eisenhower's plan to motivate the troops with Coca-Cola really did work. Coca-Cola was becoming one of the most important things to the American army and people. While Coca-Cola was powerful because it was supporting the American army in World War II, other companies were struggling to survive and come up with something new. They were being left behind. Many soldiers started writing letters to the Coca-Cola company complimenting them. One of them states how Coke builds morale for soldiers, generals, colonels, and every single person that serves the army. Some letters sent home from soldiers also talk about Coca-Cola and its significance to the army. One letter mentions how the writer was drinking a Coca-Cola while in the battlefields, and how it is more of an American drink than any other. The war ended, and Coca-Cola bottling plants were everywhere. Because of this, Coca-Cola suddenly had market coverage in almost every part of the world. It was suddenly propelled into being an international company. Due to the company becoming a giant, many new products started being inspired by it. In the mid-20th century, the company made a famous bottle design to make it unique from competitors. Other companies were so inspired that even car brands started basing some of their cars after this unique Coca-Cola bottle design. Coca-Cola, now known everywhere in America, of course, has companies trying to replicate their formula, which includes both their business model and product recipe. Though, only one of the copies actually had success. This one is called Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi eventually became Coke's biggest competitor with many lawsuits emerging. On December 24, 2002, a long legal argument between Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola finally ended. Pepsi-Cola wanted to start selling Pepsi as a fountain drink, but Coca-Cola told them that they couldn't, so Pepsi sued them for being a monopoly. During the Cold War, both companies tried hard to get past the Eastern Bloc. The only Pepsi made it through until the collapse of the Soviet Union in December 1991. Then both Coke and Pepsi had access to that market. One huge thing that distinguished Coke from Pepsi and made it propel was its advertising. The Coca-Cola company's advertising was well known around the world, not only in America. Coca-Cola has such huge market access that they have partnered with many different companies that have nothing to do with their industry to make advertisements for Coca-Cola. In fact, their advertising has impacted many parts of our culture. For example, Santa Claus used to be completely different, but Coke's advertising had changed him completely. Coca-Cola had many bottling plants set up around the battlefield in World War II for the American soldiers, causing Coca-Cola to start appearing everywhere in the world, becoming a global company. Coca-Cola became an ambassador for America to the world in a few years after the end of World War II. Due to this, the world thought of the Coca-Cola company as a representation of American compassion.